G'day guys, welcome back to another video on the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing this little uh, portion of the channel that's going to be filmed from the United States of America. So on a different time zone at the moment, and of course filming this in the middle of round four, uh, where we had a few results, uh, we'll be doing a round review at the end of the round, but I thought, uh, I just felt like making a video today, maybe highlighting some of the best performers we've seen in the competition so far this year. In this video, I'm going to go through the five players that I think have been the best on current form in the competition this year. It's extremely tough. I originally had a top 10, decided to whittle it down to a top five because there's a lot of strong performers in the league. This is really difficult to do, and I'm sure we're all gonna have different opinions, but I'm gonna give you my five regardless. Before we get into the video, guys, uh, we'll shout out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com, for all your manscaping needs. Uh, I'm on holiday at the moment, and as you can see, I need to scrub up. I have no longer got jet lag as an excuse. I need to start meeting some Americano women. Thankfully, I have packed the Lawnmower 4.0, uh, which is their state-of-the-art body hair trimmer with a ceramic blade, gets the job done quickly and easily. It's got a nice 90-minute battery runtime. The ceramic blade that it has helps reduce grooming accidents, so it's safer than using a normal blade. They've got a nose and ear hair trimmer as well, so if you've got a big date coming up, that's a good one to use. And on top of that, you can buy all these other liquid formulations, ball deodorant, a crop reviver, it even has nice cologne as well, which you can purchase. Uh, and if you do so, you can get 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. So that's 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Enjoy. So like I said in today's video, we're gonna go through the top five performers of the league so far. And uh, I'm gonna do it in order, acknowledging that of course it is a little bit arbitrary. And we're going on four and a half rounds worth of games as well. But I think there is a clear standout performer and then probably four really strong ones as well, which we'll get into in this video. To start off, and I'm certainly not the first person uh, in media circles to be making this claim, but I think Jeremy Cameron has been the standout performer in the competition so far, not only for what he's doing in terms of scoreboard impact, but also his ability to run up the ground and um, influence play further up the field. He's got an enormous tank. He's an extremely hard player to match up for opposition defenders because he's dangerous in the air, he's dangerous at ground level, and he'll run you halfway up the field as well to collect possessions. As I record this, he's equal in the common uh, with Charlie Curnow, uh, having played one less game. So you'd imagine against West Coast, he's going to get a fair few looks at goal as well. But so far this year, he's kicked two bags of six goals and seven goals in four games. We know in the modern game, bags of five plus goals are pretty hard to come by. And this guy is winning heaps of the footy and uh, kicked 13 of his goals across two games, which is a mighty effort. I think as well acknowledging that one of those bags of six came in a loss makes it a little bit more impressive when they lost to Carlton back in round two, kicked six goals and almost single-handedly dragged Geelong into the contest and certainly almost won them the game too. But on top of that goal tally of 18, which is four and a half goals a game, he's accumulating 20 possessions a game, registering five inside 50s as well. So his impact has been enormous. And on top of that, you acknowledge that he has done it in a side that is one win from four games and played some pretty mediocre footy as well from a side that won the premiership in emphatic fashion last year. He's doing it without a great amount of quality supply. So he's running up the ground to accumulate the footy and he's also getting back down there to uh, capitalize on scoring opportunities as well. So Jeremy Cameron right now is the best player in the competition. The second best player on form in the first four and a half rounds so far is a guy that's played one less game, so it's a little bit difficult to uh, compare, but I'm going to acknowledge Luke Davies Uniac, and I consider this guy probably the best center square player in the competition right now. And in terms of strictly the criteria of when you see three midfielders and a ruckman walk to the center square at the start of a bounce, I think he's probably the most dangerous player in the competition, and the stats back that up. We've seen a huge statistical increase from LDU so far this season, averaging nearly 31 possessions a game, which is plus six on last year. So a huge spike in production. He's currently fourth in the league for clearances, acknowledging he's played one less game as well. He averages a monstrous eight clearances a game, and 21 of those came in the first two rounds against West Coast and Fremantle. He's also second in the league for contested possessions per game. And I think the impressive part about what LDU was doing, he's also using the ball really effectively as well with a disposal efficiency of 81%. This guy is an absolute beast. We've seen the potential that he's had, you know, since the day he was drafted. He took a little bit longer to come on, but now I think he's exploded in a big fashion. And I think he's a genuine Brownlow contender come the end of the season. The fact that he's fifth in the coaches' votes right now as well, despite having played one less game, demonstrates his impact. The third best performed player in the competition so far in four and a half rounds 
is the new Adelaide skipper, Jordan Dawson, who I think has seen a really impressive transition, particularly in the last two weeks, to the midfield. And he's a player that's really stood up with the extra responsibility. It's a bit of a surprise that he got named Adelaide captain, at least the most outsiders. He's only been at the club for a year and a bit now, but there is absolutely no doubt he's been an absolute key pillar in Adelaide's resurgence this year. Over the last three weeks, we've seen a uh, huge improvement from Adelaide in terms of the way they're getting through four quarters and putting away some pretty good teams. And arguably, you can make the case that he's sitting on nine Brownlow votes from the last three games he's played. He's winning the ball 25 times a game at a great efficiency of 83%. He's actually second in the league for meters gained as well. But he's brought a really good balance to his game over the last couple of weeks, uh, moving more into a midfield role. And he's won five and seven clearances in the last two games, respectively. So not only are we seeing him as this damaging 70 meter player that he has been in years gone past where he uses the ball really well, gets meters gained for his team, wins the ball effectively, but he's now winning his own ball at the midfield coal face as well. The evolution of Jordan Dawson into a more well-rounded midfielder this year is A, huge for Adelaide's finals hopes and B, made him a very, very complete midfield player if he can continue on this momentum. It is, of course, only the first five rounds of the season, but we have to acknowledge him as one of the best players in the competition on current form. The fourth best player in the competition right now on current form is actually Collingwood's Nick Dacos. And it actually surprised me how high I had him in my rankings when I really laid it all out. Yeah, he had a tr- tremendous first season last year at AFL level and he won the Rising Star and he canter. But if you weren't watching him that closely, you might not notice that he's actually taken his game to another level already so far in 2023. So much so that he's actually the most prolific ball winner in the competition right now with a staggering disposal average of 34 and a half. And not only that, but he's going at a better disposal efficiency by 10% than last year. So last year, I think it was around the 76% mark. His disposal efficiency this year is 85%. When you combine that with the fact that he's winning the ball 35 times a game, that is staggering. Obviously, he had massive success as sort of a uh, unaccountable running attacking halfback last year. And there's been talk about him moving into a more permanent midfield role. To be honest, it's kind of a Rob Peter to pay Paul situation. But I do think in time, he will eventually move into a more of a midfield role. We are seeing the start of that evolution. He's winning three clearances a game as well and winning slightly more contested possessions As a percentage of his total possessions, he's getting the ball himself a fair bit more often than last year as well. So we are seeing the evolution in real time of a genuine superstar. So it was an interesting question this year, would Nick Dacos back up his amazing debut season and win potentially an All-Australian jumper in his second year? Well, now that I've sat down and looked at it, he's the fourth best player in the competition on current form, I reckon. Now, rounding out my top five of the best performed players in the competition so far. This one was tricky, and uh, I had to split between quite a few players. Clayton Oliver came to mind. Marcus Bonds and Pelly uh, also came to mind. Petrarca, Dugowie, the superstars we know. I even considered Tim Kelly loosely for the fifth spot because he's had a tremendous start to the year, which you wouldn't really know if you weren't watching West Coast games. And to be honest, I don't blame you right now. But I've decided to go for the second best performed key forward in the competition, and that is Charlie Kerno, purely just on the first, uh, well, he's played five games of the season so far and equal in the common, and he's had a tremendous impact on Carlton's relative success in the opening month or so. As I said, he's second in the common. He's had 18 goals from five games. On top of that, his contested marks have been a feature, and he's actually second in the competition for that statistic. But I think you have to have watched Carlton games, which I have done a fair bit this year, to really acknowledge the impact that this guy has had on his team winning games. So he kicked three goals against the Tigers in round one in a win. He kicked five against the Cats, which was a monstrous effort in a really tight tussle. Kicked six against the Roos. Again, that game was a pretty good battle where Carlton's Tours really got a hold of North Melbourne and it was ultimately the difference between the game, in my opinion. And even the game against the Giants, which was not a good day for key forwards, he kicked two goals three, including the match winner as well. So statistically, you could probably find players Uh, below in that list or even out of the summer that I mentioned who have potentially had more of a statistical impact. But I think watching the games, as I have done with Carlton, the impact that Kerno has on his team's success and his ability to just dominate one-on-one contested situations, the combo of him and Mackay, gives Carlton a really, really good chance in those 50-50 clashes as we've seen so far this year. And we know the talent. He's the reigning Colin medalist, so it's not that much of a controversial call to have him as the fifth best player in the comp right now. But for me, his impact in getting Carlton across the line in some of those games Even though it may not seem like it, they beat the Roos by four goals. His impact has been enormous. And I think between him and Makai, they're huge factors in Carlton potentially being a powerhouse one day. So that's it, guys. That is my crack at the top five players in the competition right now in current form. Acknowledging again, I'm recording this in the middle of a round. So I know that's a little bit dangerous because, you know, one of them could have an absolute stinker in between now and this video coming out and making me look a little bit silly. But I thought that wasn't enough reason to stop me making the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you agreed with, what you disagreed with. Most important of all, though, if you are enjoying the content, I'd really appreciate if you hit subscribe if you haven't already. 
Thanks guys, I do intend to be back with my round review this week, just the tips will be back, um, and the game day squad video, which I'll be doing every week, is also going to be back this week, so it's great to have you along for the journey. I appreciate all support, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.